Namaste yogis, welcome to my channel. My name is Cassandra and this is a practice for a healthy spine. We're going to achieve this by strengthening our back as well as strengthening our abdominals. So really working our core in a lot of different ways. This is wonderful for stability and also wonderful if you're just trying to evolve and progress your practice. So you do need one block and we're going to use it right away starting off in supported bridge pose. And we'll do supported bridge. I mean, it's up to you either on its lowest level or mid level. I'm going to do mid, mid level. So supported bridge. You can lift your hips up and place the block again, either on that first or second height so that your hips are off the floor and you can roll your shoulders down and away from your ears. Feet are flat to the mat. And let your hands rest wherever is comfortable for you here. So this will be a very grounding practice. Focusing on stability, control, and activating the posterior chain. So activating the muscles along the back body. So if you suffer from back pain or back issues, this should be a really therapeutic practice for you to hopefully alleviate that discomfort. So a lot of back pain actually can come from tightness through our hip flexors. So we'll start off right away by opening up the front of the thighs, right knee pulls into your chest and straighten your left leg out in front of you. And if your hips are really tight and low back is tight, you'll probably notice that your foot hovers off the floor. That's fine. You can just let gravity pull the heel down. And the more you try to straighten that left leg and push into your heel, the deeper you'll feel this into the psoas, into the hip flexors. And you can also pull a little bit more on your right knee and right shin, but try to keep your arms pretty soft. Just a few more breaths here. And let's switch sides, bend the left knee and release. And switch on over so that you're drawing your left knee in towards you and straightening your right leg out in front, pushing into your heel. Maybe you'll notice that this feels a lot easier on one side than on the other. Soften your jaw, connect to your breath in and out through your nose. And start to bend into your right knee. Go ahead and lift your legs up towards the sky and you can always hold onto the brick here. So holding onto your block, think of rolling your shoulders down and pushing the shoulder blades into the floor. And you're gonna bend your knees so that your shins are about parallel to the ground. Pull your lower belly in, activate through your core. And we're gonna work on abdominals here. So keep everything really solid through the abdomen. And you're just going to tap right toes down and lift back up. And then exhale, tap the left toes down and lift up. So what we don't want to do here, just keep going, exhale to lower, inhale to lift. And what we're trying to do is to not let our lower back lift up as the toes tap down. So keep everything super contracted, super firm. You should start to feel it, low belly, low abs. So even for me trying to talk is a little bit harder here because I'm engaging a lot <laughs> through my core. Take one more on each side, tapping it down, lifting it up, last one. 
and lift your legs all the way up towards the sky, nice and straight. Pull the belly in and see if you can just hover the legs, not all the way down, not too low, just a couple degrees. Notice how your stomach wants to push out, how your lower back wants to lift up. You might be able to lower down just a tiny bit more and lifting back up, bend into your knees and release. Push up to lift the brick off the mat and you're gonna place it in between your upper inner thighs and we're gonna place it the middle way. So normally we put it the um, like slimmer way in between the thighs, but this one turn it. So there's a little bit more um, distance between your thighs. And go ahead and interlace your fingers behind the back of your head. Keep your elbows splaying open. And as you inhale, hold. And on the exhale, lift head and shoulders up and squeeze your block as much as you can. Inhale, stay up. Exhale to release. Inhale, hold. Exhale, curl up. Squeeze your block, hold on the inhale, and release back down. Just a few more, inhale, and exhale. Curl up and squeeze. Lift up even higher as you breathe in, pull the navel down, exhale to lower. Inhale here, exhale, squeeze, curl. Hold both shoulder blades off the floor, and release. Last one, inhale. Exhale, squeeze your block, lift head and shoulders off the floor. Breathe in, lift up even higher. Exhale, release back down. Okay, so last little thing with the block here, go ahead and put it in the slimmer angle in between your thighs. So your thighs are going to be hugging a little bit closer towards each other. And we're gonna come into functional bridge. So instead of lifting straight up with our hips, start to straighten your legs. Your knees are only going to be bent a tiny little bit. And go ahead and flex your feet so only your heels are touching. Bring your upper arms beside you, palms facing in towards each other. Squeeze your block as much as you possibly can. Push into your arms, push into your heels, and go ahead and lift your hips off the floor. They're only going to lift up about an inch or two. This is a very small bridge pose. Dig into your heels and try to drag them back towards your shoulders. You're going to feel the hamstrings engage. Take one more inhale, squeeze your block, and go ahead and lower down. An awesome, awesome pose for your spine. Let's bring our knees in towards the belly, give it a big squeeze, whatever feels good here. And we'll make our way to our tabletop pose so you can rock up. Crossing at the ankles, palms under your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. And let's take a few rounds of cat and cow. Spread your fingertips nice and wide here. As you inhale, drop the belly, lift the gaze, curl tailbone up. Exhale to round and contract. And keep going in and out of those two poses. Slow, steady motions. Paying attention to where you feel this along your spine, what areas feel more open, which ones feel a little bit tighter. Last one here. And coming back to neutral, take a plank pose. So straighten the legs, tucking the toes under. Reach the crown of your head forward, draw your navel in, and now tap the knees down and lift them back up. And just keep doing that a few times. Every time your knees lift off the floor, think of dropping your hips a little bit more. And tap again for three, two, one. And release, back into your tabletop pose. Reach your right leg up and back, roll your right hip down. Kick into that heel. Draw your navel in and try to flatten out your spine. Maybe you stay here or you add on by stretching your left arm forward. Bicep along the ear, thumb pointing up. If you have both your arm and your leg up, notice how tempting it is to drop the belly and collapse into your low back. So often back health 
is directly linked to how much we're engaging our abdominals. We're just holding here. Take one more full deep breath. Left hand comes down to the mat. Roll to the inner edge of your right foot. Reach your right arm up to the sky. Modified side plank here. And you might choose to stay as you are or find your full side plank pose, stacking one leg over the other. Only looking up if that feels okay for your neck. Think of pressing your hips up towards the sky. And plank pose, lower your knees down, tabletop, and we'll switch sides. So two-legged table. Start by extending your left leg first, roll your left hip down. So the back of your leg is facing up to the ceiling. Draw your navel in, flatten out your low back, and then maybe you go a little further, adding some intensity here by lifting your right arm up. Try to keep your left elbow straight and really push into your fingertips and knuckles. Think of lengthening your right hand away from your left heel as if you were being pulled in opposite directions. Keep pulling your lower belly in, flattening out your low back. This is a super strong pose into your modified side plank, right hand down, and reach your left arm up to the sky. And you might choose to just stay here or transition to your full side plank pose, whatever version feels the best for you right now. If you're in full side plank, think of reaching your hips up even higher, pushing into your feet. And lowering down, plank pose, come all the way down to your belly. Point your toes back, three baby cobras, inhale, chin, chest, palms come off the floor. Exhale, lower down, twice more. Inhale, squeeze and lift. Exhale, release. Last one, inhale. And exhale, downward facing dog, tuck your toes under. Lift your hips up and back. And take a moment here in your downward facing dog to paddle the feet. If the low back feels tight and sensitive, keep a generous bend in your knees. Maintain some length through your arms. There's a softening of your jaw, of your facial muscles. And even here, you're toning the navel back towards your spine, maintaining core engagement. And if you have your block to the side of the mat, you might just want to pl uh, place it towards the top of the mat so it's there for our sequence. Coming back into your downward facing dog, let's reach our right leg up towards the sky. Go ahead and bend your right knee if you'd like. Take a big stretch into your hips. Straighten and square your right leg so the thigh is parallel to the floor. Exhale, tap your knee to your nose. Come forward strong into your plank. Inhale, three-legged dog, stretch it back. Exhale, squeeze it in, shoulders over your wrists. Inhale, up and back. Last one, same thing. Exhale, pull it in, keep your hips low. Look past your hands, and now step that foot through. Lower your back knee down, low lunge. Reach up through your arms. So getting a little bit deeper into our hip flexors, Again, because this is wonderful for our low back, think of pulling up through your abs here, through your core, reaching your tailbone down and lengthening so that you can lift out of your lower back. And the more you're able to lengthen your tailbone towards the mat and then move forward, the deeper you're going to feel this through your left hip. Strong through your arms, maybe shifting your gaze up, challenging your balance a little into your easy twist, left hand down, right arm up, open up, back knee lifts off the floor. So twists are also wonderful for a spine. Looking down to the mat, right fingertips come down and go ahead and step up to the top of the mat, ragdoll fold. So your feet can be wide here as you hold onto the elbows, maybe sway a little side to side. Definitely keeping a bit of a bend in your knees. 
some traction along your spine. Fingertips come down to the floor. Turn your heels and toes out to lower into your squats. Hands at your heart, use your elbows to push your knees open a little bit wider. And think of lengthening with a straight spine here. Crown of the head reaching up to the sky. And find your downward facing dog. Plant your palms, step the feet back. And instead of taking a traditional vinyasa here, we're gonna inhale forward into plank pose. Super strong and lower all the way down. Grab a hold of your block and extend it forward overhead. Keep the back of your neck long. Keep your feet flat on the floor and as you inhale, lift the upper body and lift your block up with you. Exhale, lower down. Twice more here. Inhale, squeeze and lift. Exhale to lower. Last one, inhale. And exhale, keep the block where it is, leave it there, downward facing dog. And we'll repeat that sequence over on the second side, left leg up, and go ahead and bend your knee, open up your hip. Straighten and square that left leg. As you exhale, tap your knee to your nose, come forward into plank. Inhale, three like a dog. Exhale, squeeze it in. Inhale, reach. Exhale, squeeze. Keep your hips low. Look past your hands. Low lunge. So that left foot steps through. Back knee comes down to the floor. And go ahead and rise up. So keep reminding your tailbone to be heavy. Your lower belly draws in, so we're not collapsing here. And find a little bit more length. Rib cage expands front to back, side to side. Looking wherever it works for you. Transitioning from here into your easy twist, right hand to the floor, left arm up. Back knee lifts off the floor. Really feel your left shoulder stack directly on top of the right one. And looking down at the floor, ragdoll fold, you're gonna step the right foot forward. And you can widen your feet a little bit more, especially if there's a lot of tightness here. Just swaying. And release your fingers down, turn your heels and toes out into your squats. Hands at your heart, push the elbows out, or push your knees out with your elbows, I should say. Find some length. And downward facing dog. We're just using this to transition so that we can find that locust variation with the block. Inhale, forward to plank pose. And then go ahead and lower down. Reach your arms forward, grab a hold of that block. We're gonna keep our feet flat on the mat so the toes are kind of digging into the floor. Just the upper body lifts, inhale. It's not gonna lift up very high. Exhale, two more, inhale. Try to keep your arms as straight as possible. Exhale, the last one, inhale, and release, downward facing dog. Okay, here we go, from our downward dog, reach your right leg up to the sky, keep the leg straight this time and squared, focus on the stability, draw your navel in. We're gonna step to our high lunge, so right foot goes forward, once you're here, grab your block and lift it up with you. So high lunge with our block in between the hands, reach your arms up high. So notice here, especially for me, I'm very guilty of this. I kind of flare the ribs open and curve a lot in my low back. So if you're like me, try to push those floating ribs down. You might need to bend a little bit into your back knee. So there's lots of length in your low back and squeeze and engage through your core. 
Keep reaching up through your hands, through your block, as if you were pushing it up towards the ceiling. Sink down a little lower and just bend into your elbows here. Put a couple pounds of pressure pushing into the block so that you feel your pectorals engage. And then just twist a little bit over to the right. So notice what happens in your low back if you tilt a little bit here as you twist. Try to keep your hips facing forward. Coming all the way back. Okay, from here into our warrior three, transitioning so that you're balancing on your right leg. Left leg extends. And this is the gentler variation, keeping the block where it is. If you want to amp up the intensity and really strengthen you're going to extend your arms up overhead. Keep holding your block. Pull your belly in, core is strong. If your arms were straight, bend the elbows and come all the way up to stand, bring your left knee in with you. Left hand to your hip, place the block to the inside of your thigh. Start to push your block into the thigh and feel your thigh and your leg push back against your block. So there's resistance here. And then open up into a twist. Left arm reaches back. Or really keep pushing into your block with your left leg. This will help keep your hips forward as you twist. Coming all the way back to center. Okay, into our half moon pose. You're going to drop the block down on the floor, left arm up, left leg up and back. See if you can stack your left hip over your right, stacking your left shoulder over your right, expanding in all directions, squeeze your glutes. As lightly as possible, find your warrior two, leave your block on the floor. Warrior two, front right knee is bent generously here. Squeezing that knee open, shoulders over your hips. Let's reverse, left hand down, right arm up. Vinyasa, cartwheel the palms down. Inhale to plank, maybe chaturanga if you'd like. Cobra or upward facing dog. And we all meet back, downward facing dog. From this down dog, stretch your left leg up to the sky. Keep it straight and square. Step it forward. We're coming to our high lunge. Grab your block and bring it up with you. So again, checking in, this is for our spine. We want our core engaged. This is not a pose that we can just collapse into. And keep the energy going all the way up into your hands, into the block, and all the way down, grounded into your feet. Tailbone is heavy. Can you sink the hips down a little more? Bend your elbows so your block is in front of your chest. Push your hands into your block and then start to twist over to the left. Try not to let your hips move. The more you can pull your lower belly in, the deeper you'll be able to twist. Coming all the way back forward. We're going into warrior three, choosing the arm variation that feels the best to you. So we're balancing on the left leg, keeping the hips squared as the right leg extends. Maybe the arms reach up overhead. Bend your elbows, we come all the way up to stand, bring your right knee up with you. Right hand to your hip, block pushes to the inside of your right thigh, push your thigh against the block, and initiate the twist from here. Right arm extends back, keep pushing. Try not to dig your toes in the floor. 
Let your spine grow a little taller in this pose. And back to facing forward. Now we open everything up to the side for your half moon pose. Left hand and block go down to the mat. Right arm, right leg up. So instead of stacking and being parallel to the floor, now we're trying to open to the side of the mat, to the side of the room. Squeeze into your glutes to keep that leg lifted up. And as gracefully as you can, keep the block on the floor. Just leave it there and find your warrior two. Front knee is bent, back leg is straight. Shoulders align over your hips. Squeeze that knee open a little more. And let's reverse, right hand down, left arm up. Vinyasa, hands to the mat, plank pose, chaturanga, cobra or upward dog, downward facing dog. And from this down dog, bring your knees down to the floor, grab a hold of your block and take a seat. So from here, Go ahead and widen your legs to whatever distance is appropriate to you in your straddle pose. You wanna be able to tilt the pelvis forward rather than feeling like you're rolling and falling back. If you feel like you're rolling and falling back, you'll probably need to bring your legs a little closer towards one another. Grab a hold of your block and reach your arms up overhead. Flex your toes push into your heels. Take an inhale to lift and lengthen. As you exhale, tilt forward a little bit, flat back. Inhale, lift up. And as you exhale, round and lower down, just about halfway, bringing the block out in front of you. So we'll do that about five more times. Inhale, exhale, tilt. Inhale, lift, pull the belly in, curl back, keep the legs open. Inhale, exhale, tilt. Inhale, lift, curl and lower. A few more. Two more here, inhale up. Exhale, flat back. Inhale, lift, round and curl. Last one, inhale, exhale, inhale, lift, exhale, curl, come all the way up and just go ahead and fold down, passive forward fold, just let yourself relax here. So starting to unwind and slow down, we've worked really hard And now we can give ourselves permission to slow things down, to take longer, deeper breaths. And stretching along the spine, stretching down the legs. Start to walk your hands in. And you can bend into your knees, bring the soles of your feet together and knees apart. This is your butterfly fold. Instead of folding straight down, we're gonna stretch a little bit more into our, uh, into our back by adding a little bit of a side, um, side bend. So instead of going directly forward, walk your hands over to the right and then go ahead and fold. So you'll feel this a little bit more in the left side of your low back and into your left hip. No tension in your jaw. And come back to center and just crawl the fingertips over to the other side. Both sit bones anchored to the floor as you fold over to the left, stretching through the right side of your low back.
<sighs> Crawl the fingertips back to center and come all the way back up. And you won't need your block anymore. Just let yourself come down. We'll close with a laying spinal twist before making our way to Shavasana. Open up your arms. You can move your hips over to the right before letting both knees drop down to the left. And if there's another variation of this twist that you prefer, you're welcome to go into it. But try to make sure your chest is facing up and you're really twisting by trying to stack one hip over the other. And inhale back through to center. And we'll twist to the other side. So your hips can go to the left. Knees drop over to the right. Left hip over the right one. Bring your knees back up. Check in to see if there's anything else your body might require at this time before we find Shavasana, our resting pose. Palms facing up to the sky. And hopefully you can feel the effects of this practice along your spine. It might be subtle, it might be very obvious. For me, I feel it because it seems easier to take deeper breaths. It feels more spacious, more expansive. And just let yourself soften here. Deep in your breath, feeling yourself come alive with some gentle movement. Stretching out. And we'll roll to one side, coming up to take a seat. And join your hands at the front of your heart, Anjali Mudra. 
taking a moment to really honor the hard work that you've done, the time you've set aside for yourself, your practice, your breath. And together we'll close with the chant of Om, inhaling to chant, big breath in. Oh. Namaste. Thank you so much, yogis, for doing this practice with me. Please do subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos multiple times a week. There's lots to choose from. And if you want to stay a little longer on the mat, I would recommend following it up with this video right here. Thank you again. Namaste.